and So our next speaker is Guillaume Baudy from the Office Francais de la Biodiversité in France, who will talk to us about using the Darwin Core Standard for estimated records. So Guillaume, over to you, thank you. And I'm sorry for mangling the name of where you work. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> um... Here it is. Uh, so thank you. So I'm so going to- can, Guillaume, at the moment, we can see your presenter notes and um, slides. So if you could go to full screen, that would be great. Okay, I'm on full screen. Is that fine here? Or? We can still see all the slides down the, down the side at the moment. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to to uh, present you how I apply the Darwin Core Standard for estimated records, and it's based on a work performed by Dr. Mathilde Mousset. So I'm Guillaume Body, and I'm part of the brand new French Office of Biodiversity. Um, I just move that. Um, I've done this work under the Inet Wild Consortium, which is a European consortium financed by uh, the European Food Safety Authority. And EFSA aims at performing a disease risk assessment in Europe, particularly on white boar and the African swine fever. But we are currently broadening the to other animal species carrying disease. One job of Inetwild is to aggregate data at the European level. And we need different outputs. The first is species distribution, which we base this output on uh, species occurrences. We also need species abundance uh, maps and for that, we will get data from hunting bag and density estimation. Hunting bag, bags are quite common data, but they have indirect link with abundance and density estimation are very rare data. So if you are in this conference, I don't have to tell you why we need standards to aggregate data. Uh, for species occurrences and hunting bag, bags data, the Darwin core is very useful, but for density estimation, there is not yet a standard, or at least I've not found it, um, to, uh, to record this data. Density estimation are particular because they are not directly measured on the ground, but they are really estimated. So we need information about the statistical method to trust the result and we have to carry the precision of the estimation, so the confidence interval, the variance, or other records, uh, to respect the work of our uh, colleagues, and especially the statistician people. Oops, sorry. So if we go back yeah, to um, the down your, Sorry to interrupt you, but um, your slides aren't moving. It's still stuck on the first introductory slide. Okay. Um, it's moving on my side. So I can try to reboot. Is it better now? We're now seeing a different slide. So hopefully that will be better. Okay, that's the first one with the Darwin core standard? Yes. Okay. So if we check what we are able to do with the Darwin core standard, we have three uh, main elements. The event core, 
introduced by the EU, EU bond, uh, which presents the events. And one particular uh, particularity of this score is that we can nest events in each other. We have the occurrence extension, which was the base of the Darwin core for all the biological information. And we have the measurement extension to record measurement of the event or of the occurrence itself, which was which is a, a new element that uh, has been introduced by the OBIS. So it's very useful for simple raw data like occurrence observation, but also for complex raw data like distance sampling, drive hunts, or even for aggregated data like the total hunting bag per country or per uh, interest zone uh, that we have. I'm changing slide, it's working. But we have a problem with the density and its precision. Uh, using these three elements, we can record the density estimation itself using the measurement of fact ex extension. In this case, in one study area, we can estimate that the density of road deer is 15 individual per kilometer square, and we can also record the detection probability. But we cannot currently record the precision of this estimation. There was two ways to solve this problem. One was to introduce different new columns in this uh, measurement of fact extension corresponding to the confidence interval, the variance, the standard error, but there were many ways to record precision. And the second option we found and we selected was to nest measurement in each, in each other, in the same way that events are nested in each other. So using that, we can nest the distribution, the interval or the standard deviation in uh, the density estimation, and we can do the same for detection probability. But we can even go further by recording another level of measurement, and we can say that the interval that represents the density uh, precision has a confidence level itself. It's 95%. It's quite common, but it could be different. It could be 90, it could be 99, it could be 50, if you want. And we can also record non-parametric distribution. Using a peak quantile measurement, we can record all of the value for each quantile that we selected. So if we go back to uh, standard data we collect from producer, we have the year, the estimation, and the precision. We can easily record that in the Darwin core now using the event ID, which is a three, three fountain forest, the different occurrence for the different years. And in the measurement of fact table, we can include the density, the two density here, and their interval of confidence. For that, we just need two new elements. One is the basis of record. This record is neither a human observation nor a machine observation. It's really a statistical estimation. So we have to record it. And we need a new, uh, a new column in the measurement of fact uh, extension, which is the parent measurement ID. So we just propose in this uh, a small change in the Darwin core, which is to nest measurement in each other and to include the, a new element in the basis of record. I told you that we also need uh, information about the statistical method and the analysis, but that's metadata information. So I will not go further on this topic. I had another problem when performing this, uh, this data collection. Um, 
it's the particular case of partial occurrence. For, for instance, I have this table on the top, which corresponds to a hunting bag statistic from Belgium. And I have the number of wild boar hunted in different sectors. But I also have information about the number of female and piglets in these 79 wild boar hunted in sector C. In the current arena core, I cannot record all of this information. I cannot easily record them. It's very easy for the total, but not necessarily for the partial information we have. It's the same problem when you check a group of individuals. It's very easy to record the group size of this occurrence, but when you want to record as well the identity of individuals, it's quite complicated. And it's more complicated when you just have some ID and not all of them. So for that, I apply the same um, reasoning than for the measurement and the event. I propose to nest occurrence in each other, which correspond to partial occurrence. So in the first case, in the 79 individual, we can say using a partial occurrence that we have five females and 55 juveniles. And these two elements are part of the main occurrence corresponding to the 79 individuals. It's the same for the second case where we had four IDs in one group of six. We can record the main occurrence. It's a group of six IBEX and they are males. And we can also record that among these six, we have the ID of four individuals. And it's really easy to understand when you um, read the data set. Two minutes, Guillaume. Okay, I'm at the end, so it will be perfect. Um, so the only small change we propose in uh, in while is to nest measurement in each other and to nest occurrence in each other. It's a new element, but not that new because it's just an extension of what is done in the event core. And there is one element in the basis of record that we propose to add. That's a small change, but it may have a large impact because it allows to record outputs of analysis. And if you think about essential biodiversity variables, they are outputs of analysis. And by adopting this change, the Darwin core can be a standard for EBVs which is a very uh, big uh, trend of ecological surveys. So using this standard, we hope to propose you more of these results that correspond to the hunting bag statistic and the density of hunting bag statistic in Europe forest uh, that aggregates uh, maybe 100 different uh, data sets. So I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Guillaume. Um, so we already have a hand raised, Rich Pyle. Rich, would you like to come off mute and ask your question? Yeah, sure. So um, first of all, I really like the idea of nested measurement or fact. I think that's, that's, a, that's a really clever way to solve that. And I guess what I'm wondering is when most people present a data set with values for measurement or fact, you know, there's some way that each item in that list is linked to whatever it applies to, right? So there's an occurrence ID or a taxon ID or an event ID, something to which that measurement of fact applies. And I guess the way we've always done it is we simply add that Darwin core term like taxon ID or occurrence ID or something to that set and that makes it self-evident to which other item the measurement or fact applies. But I wonder 
if following the model of resource relationship, instead of adding a parent measurement ID, you add a measured item ID as sort of the general, as part of this class that says, what is the ID of the thing being measured or the thing to which the fact applies? And that could be a taxon ID or an occurrence ID or an event ID or a location ID, or it could be another measurement ID. And that way you can achieve your N numbers of hierarchical you know, nesting of measurement or fact using that term. Now, I, it's, it's, a, it's a subtly, you know, well, not so subtly different way of handling the same issue by adding, instead of a term parent measurement ID, which would have only one function, to measured item ID, which would be very generic and allow any measurement or fact to apply to any other class of item um, using that property. Uh, I don't know if I'm not making any sense here, but I, I, I'm just trying to think if that might be a better way to modify the measurement or fact class is to, is to add a term for measured item ID, the value of which would be whatever the ID of whatever it is being measured. Um, that late leads to issues of, well, okay, do you then need a measured item class ID so that you know which class of thing that measured item ID goes to? I'm, I'm, I'm not really asking a question. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Yeah. Um, I've not really explored much of this uh, extension of resource relationship. Uh, we mostly base our reflection on what was done in OBIS, which already introduced the fact that we could uh, provide a measurement of an occurrence which is itself linked to an event. That's their main change. And we wanted to input uh, very little change, the less possible change. So using this structure, we do not have to use another extension. So we, we are still based on the three main extension. And we use exactly the same ID links than OBIS. So indeed, in the measurement extension, you have the ID of the event and of the occurrence to respect the star schema. And we do the same. When we link a measurement to another, we link it as well to the event ID to respect the star schema. And I didn't want to go too far in this reorganization and to introduce uh, less change as possible. Yeah, no, I, I'm sorry, I understood that. And I guess I, I misspoke a little bit. I didn't mean incorporating resource relationship. I only mentioned that as a model for how we have another class of thing that has a generic out pointing uh, property. I didn't mean that you would use resource relationship instances to make this. I, I just sort of was using that as a model to say, well, instead of having, instead of modifying, adding one property to measurement effect as parent measurement ID, instead you add one property measured item ID, which would allow you to recursively link measurements to each other by simply having the value of measured item ID be another measurement ID, but at the same time, it could also be a taxon ID. It would be an explicit linkage, an explicit pointer to each instance of a measurement or fact to whatever it is that is a measurement of fact of. I, I, I may be not explaining this, and, I, and it's more just, again, thinking out loud, and, and I didn't wanna, I think your proposal is fine, but this is just an idea I had, and, and uh, I don't need any more elaboration, but thank you. Sounds like something, um, a proposal that you might have to draw a picture for us, Rich. Some of us might have to uh, see yeah, something. Yeah, uh, it would take <laughs> a lot more than, I, that's why I started writing a chat and I thought this is too complicated. And then I realized <laughs> it was too complicated to explain it here, but I, I might send, I'll put something in the notes. Thank you. So Quentin asks, isn't event normally intended for activity over a single period? But in these data, the event is repeated each year. Yeah, the event you can in the in the output you organize it uh, more or less as you want, uh, and we propose to put the the less variable elements at the top and the most variable at the bottom of the event structure. Uh, so 
it's true that when you record result, the event change a little bit of signification than when you record raw data. Thank you. Quentin also um, suggests that this would be a very good topic for a TADWIG task group. And would you consider convening one? Uh, Which I'm is not, really putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I, I can be in a group if you invite me. <laughs> I will be pleased to present my, <laughs> my work. And if TADWIG people take it out and uh, standardize it, uh, I will be very happy. That's a I guess I wasn't really asking. I guess I wasn't really asking for you to join a group. I was hoping you would convene a group. So I'm looking for volunteers. <laughs> anyway, I won't put you on the spot anymore. Um, and and so uh, further on that, um, so the other part of the um, proposal that you had was to add another value to. Um, uh, to basis of record for statistical estimation. Uh, so um, I don't know, Paula, if you want to say anything about um, uh, the process that uh, would need to be uh, undertaken to, add, to discuss adding a new value to, um, to basis of record. Well, Ellie, I'm not sure I'm the best person to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> that basically you would have to follow the, 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 well, actually for a new value for basis of record, there is, the vocabulary suggested in Darwin core is not part of the actual standard. As you know, the vocabularies are not set for that term. They are the de facto vocabulary used, and it's probably a conversation that you would want to have with GBF as well. Yes. Quentin, do you have any ideas on this? Um, no. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, this is why I think it really needs a task group to look at it from many different angles, actually. So some standards work to be done. Um, in the chat, Mary Kennedy asks, if using estimates, could you have an occurrence record for a taxon where occurrence status is absent, but then have an estimated count in the measurement fact record? No, you, you can record that it's absent, but if it's absent, you cannot put an estimate uh, number of individuals. That doesn't have sense. So technically, it will be possible, but it won't. It won't match. But you can have a probability of presence. That's in between. Thank you. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Guillaume. Um, I think okay. that was a um, a really interesting talk, and I do like your wild boar. Um, that we have up on the screen at the moment. So thank you. Um, we will just stop the recording.